Right then, the new Red Magic 7. This phone is an absolute unit, and at only 630 bucks for the entry-level model I'm reviewing, if you want a new phone and a portable gaming console but can't afford both, this phone might be the solution. Now, there's a lot going for this device when it comes to gaming, but one of the standout features we'll start with is the display, which supports up to 165 hertz refresh rate with a 720 hertz touch sampling rate, which is pretty crazy. It's a 6.8 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display at 1080 by 2400 with a max peak brightness of 700 nits. So not the best for outdoor viewing, but it produces some awesome colors with 100% DCI-P3 gamut coverage, and there's a bunch of different color profiles to choose from. Now, day-to-day -day performance is about as good as it gets in the smartphone world. Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with 12, 16, or even 18 gigs of RAM, along with that crazy 165 hertz display. And using descriptive words like button very smooth or snappy um, is an understatement. And of course, gaming is as good as it gets right now. Like this phone will eat any triple digit FPS game like it's a snack and it'll still ask for more. Now you might be thinking, Jesus, Murphy, 165 Hertz for gaming on a 6.8 inch display is a bit overkill, Jared. And I'd reply, switching back and forth between 90 and 165 Hertz over and over again, you can see and feel the difference. Now, the problem with 165 hertz is that it runs through battery like dairy runs through someone who's lactose intolerant. So you might think, oh, okay, well, I'll just split the difference and go with 120 hertz setting. And yeah, you could, but you're not saving much battery over 165 hertz and no one's buying a gaming phone and choosing to run the display at 60 hertz. So in my opinion, you're either running at 165 hertz when you're gaming and switching back to 90 for daily tasks, or just 90 at all times for the best balance, or do whatever the hell you want, it's your phone. <laughs> now, the Snapdragon 8 is a super fast chip, and it's known for getting hot when being pushed to its limits. And based on my experience, it gets particularly hot around the camera modules. So to prevent the phone from a nuclear meltdown, but most importantly, performance throttling, we've got this cooling fan. Now, the cooling fan's nothing new to Red Magic, but this year they've updated it with a bunch of new cooling materials and it's even quieter than last year's. Now, testing with 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Test, both with the fan running at max and with it off, the best loop scores in both scenarios are pretty similar. In fact, the test with the fan off actually scored a few points higher, but I'm just chalking that up to minor variable differences. But where things get interesting is with the lowest loop scores. So for the test with the fan on, we get over 300 points more than with the fan off. Furthermore, with the fan on, we get a stability score of 92% and only 78% with it off. And even further beyond that, you can see that with the fan off, temperatures go between 32 to 55 degrees versus the 25 to 49 degrees with the fan on. So you can visually see the fan is in fact doing its job and a pretty decent job at that. Like it's it's not just a gimmick, you know? So what would a gaming phone be without some special proprietary gaming software, right? Well, just move that little red slider up and welcome to the Game Space Center. Uh, this is where you can really dial in your gaming experience by adjusting display settings, the performance mode, and even enable or disable compatible plugins. And when you're playing a game, swiping from the left or right brings up the game center menu with a ton of useful settings you can change just like in the main game center menu but on the fly so like the display's refresh rate uh, the performance mode the fan mode and a bunch of other settings this is also where you enable and customize your touch sensitive shoulder triggers which is really straightforward and easy to do and they're a lot of fun to use in shooter or racing games giving you a bit of a closer experience of using an actual gaming controller so it's running android 12 with red magic os version 5 over top and other than the next word browser app there doesn't seem to be be any third-party bloatware, which was actually pretty surprising to me. And there's a lot of customization options in the settings over and above your standard options. There's also some themes you can choose from, RGB lighting customization options, some more cooling fan options. There's even a heart rate monitor using the in-display fingerprint reader. Uh, speaking of the fingerprint reader, for me, it's actually been quite nice to use. It's really fast and pretty accurate, although I did find that I get more misses when my fingers are a little dry. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but this phone does have an always on display with a few different graphics to pick from, plus a custom option as well as some settings to play around with. Now, as far as the rest of the phone, it feels a lot more expensive than it is. We've got Gorilla Glass Victus on the front covered by a screen protector and a standard glass back. Uh, it does have a pretty striking gamer design to it, especially if you have the LED lights on. Um, there's a headphones jack at the top. It's got stereo speakers that get super loud, but sound fairly tinny. Uh, you've got the main intake vent at the back, another one on the left, and then the exhaust vent on the right. So there's a 4,500 milliamp hour battery this year, which is a step down from last year's 5,000 milliamp hour battery, but 
at 50% brightness with the display set to 90 hertz with regular day-to-day -day usage, so basically with no gaming. Uh, I got about five hours, give or take 30 minutes, depending on what I was doing. But as you'd expect, gaming will drain it like a pump truck at a porta potty. So with the performance mode at the highest setting and the display set at 165 hertz, I'm only getting about an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> it does come with a 65 watt charger in the box though, so it'll charge right back up super fast. And there's this neat battery bypass feature you can enable where if you plug into a charger, it'll use that instead of the battery power, so that's pretty handy. Now, even though this phone's main focus is performance and gaming, it does actually have a bunch of cameras, but I warn you, you'll wanna temper those expectations. So on the rear, we've got a 64 megapixel standard wide angle main shooter, an eight megapixel ultra wide, and a two megapixel macro. Um, photos are better than a budget phone, but still quite unimpressive. Like there's very little dynamic range. Uh, colors are fairly washed out and objects are overprocessed. The ultra wide looks terrible. And even though there's up to a five times zoom, only one X and two X are actually usable. Oh, and to make matters even worse, that eight megapixel front selfie camera, yeah, portrait mode just flat out doesn't work. Like this is without portrait mode and this is with portrait mode. So clearly a software bug, but uh, there was a big software update like just a few weeks ago. So I don't know. Look, as long as performance is more important to you than photo quality, you'll love this phone. Uh, fantastic display, awesome features, clean software okay battery life with balanced settings and a reasonable price for what's offered. Yeah, I dig it. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments because I think that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.